I want you all to age in a confident, successful, Dilphi Silver Foxes. Guys, it's your face. Your skin absolutely impacts your level of attractiveness and your outcomes. A 2016 study actually found a link between your perceived trustworthiness and the quality of your skin. So imagine making less money, less friends, having less sex, less success, us everything, all because you didn't spend 60 seconds on something that is so simple. That's why today we're gonna cover the only three things that you need to do to age like a celebrity slash vampire, as well as some myths and common questions from men. So I am a qualified chemist specifically focused on men's care products. So I can guarantee you that the information that you're gonna receive here today is better than what you can get from any other men's content creator out there. We're not talking about pillowcases or drinking enough water or these weird nitpicky details in a routine. Only the things that are absolutely gonna move the needle. I'm Angel with The Modern Man. Let's get cracking. All right, so tip number one for putting together an excellent beginner-friendly skincare routine really is kind of two parts, but we'll start with the first part is putting on a moisturizer for the morning and for the nighttime. Morning meaning that it has some level of SPF and sun protection in it. So crazy enough, the sun is responsible for over 80% of visual aging. So that's the majority of the visual aging that you will see with someone. So if you could only do one thing, this would be the one thing for you to do to age gracefully. If you don't believe me, check out these insane images. Here is a lady who is 92 years old, applied sunscreen to her face daily, but didn't ever apply it to her neck. That is the difference of aging. Absolutely insane. Here's a truck driver. Part of her face is exposed to the window, part of it's exposed to the car. The part exposed to the sun and the window, it aged substantially more. It's absolutely insane. The windows are only gonna block UVB rays. You still have to deal with UVA rays. Before I go into some of the details of how to use it and what to look for, I wanna talk about some of the misinformation that occasionally gets perpetuated about sunscreen. I can make an entire video about this, but really quickly here, I can think of three things. One is that sunscreen causes cancer. Two, it blocks vitamin D, so it's bad for you. And then three, bleaching of the coral reef. So let's talk about the cancer one. It sounds bad that occasionally benzene has been found in sunscreens, but one, is incredibly rare when that happens. And the two, the level of parts per million that are being found in these products is so low that the amount that would actually be absorbed topically is a percent of a percent of a percent. And so at the end of the day, the increase to your risk for cancer is 0.0001%. So it's good that we screen for these and they typically get caught and they don't get released to the public in most cases. Now for bleaching the coral reefs, there's a very big difference of applying sunscreen and chemicals directly to coral reef in a test tube versus how it would actually happen when you're in the ocean and with people applying it on their body. So the information there doesn't directly apply. And then as for vitamin D, you get plenty of vitamin D just from being outside from like your hands and any exposed part of your body as well as your scalp. So applying sunscreen, the health benefits is far out gonna outweigh the less vitamin D that you're gonna get, but you're gonna get plenty of vitamin D anyways from, again, those exposed parts of your body and probably supplementation of vitamin D. So to find a sunscreen, ideally you wanna be looking for SPF 50 plus, 30 plus is okay. And no, it's not just a 1% difference between 30 and some of the higher SPFs, just FYI. So there's gonna be what's called chemical sunscreen and then mineral sunscreen. So what you choose is basically up to preference. They're both gonna be very effective for you. So chemical, tends to have a more elegant formulation that's gonna be smoother, usually sinks in the skin a lot more nicely, and is really nice when you reapply throughout the day, whereas mineral is made up of a lot more like powders in the formula, and so it tends to be more likely to be kind of chalky or a little tacky on application. However, the benefit of mineral over chemical is that if you have sensitive skin, if you break out, so I get, I'm allergic to certain filters on sunscreen, um, Mineral is a good choice if you have sensitive skin or you're acne prone or you have really oily skin in most cases. And to buy a sunscreen is really simple. I have links in the description below for a lot of really good options for you. Don't overthink it. You can get something from the drugstore. It's gonna be plenty effective. There's not gonna be an impact between using say like CeraVe from the drugstore and using a more mid-market or upmarket type of product. Typically the upmarket products will not only cost more, but they'll have different ingredients to help with different areas, but not necessarily the sun protection. And then sometimes they might have a better feeling formulation on application for the skin. So when you use sunscreen, use it right before you go outside. 
even if it's a rainy day, there's still UV rays that are gonna impact you. It's not gonna make a difference today. It's not gonna make a difference tomorrow. But years from now, the accumulation of the UV damage is going to add up and that's what ages you over time. And I'm a pragmatic person, so I'm not gonna say get religious about it, but you should reapply it every two hours if you are outside. So if you're like at the beach, you're doing something active, definitely reapply the sunscreen. But if you're, you know, two hours later, you're getting in your car to go drive somewhere really quickly for five, 10 minutes, or it, the UV index is kind of low, then I wouldn't worry too much about it. But of course, the more that you do it, the better it is gonna be from an anti-aging context. So the second part of tip number one is using a moisturizer. I say the second part because sunscreen works as a moisturizer. You wouldn't apply it at nighttime, but it's redundant to use a moisturizer than a sunscreen in the morning because they're made of pretty much the same ingredients. And so at nighttime, you'll wanna have a dedicated moisturizer without SPF. And this is really good in most cases, depending on the formulation for tackling the antioxidant side of the house when it comes to anti-aging. So there's these things called free radicals, which are essentially these molecules that will attach onto your cells and cause DNA damage. And antioxidants scavenge for those and basically get them from doing the bad things and aging your skin and damaging your DNA. And a lot of moisturizers tend to have antioxidants in them along with being good for moisturizing and protecting your skin barrier. And so this is something that you'll wanna to do to maximize anti-aging. For moisturizers, it's not just about what it's gonna do for you down the road. They can do a lot for your skin today to make you look your absolute best. They can blur a lot of fine lines, cover in some wrinkles a little bit. They can make your skin look really full and hydrated and nice because of locking in some of the moisture as opposed to having it evaporate as well as brightening some of the skin and helping with some various imperfections here. There are a lot of issues that someone has with the skin. There's a lot of moisturizers that could potentially help with that. Regardless of if your skin is oily or if it's dry, a moisturizer is great for you. They'll just be made of a few different things. Generally speaking, if you have very oily skin, acne prone skin, most of the moisturizers that you are gonna use are likely gonna be some sort of a gel consistency or gel cream type of consistency to a light lotion potentially. And then if you're on the drier side, you tend to get to more of a heavier cream consistency that's gonna be really rich and locking in the moisture. For those with oily skin, you're mostly gonna focus on getting things that hydrate the skin and your oil is gonna help lock some of that in. Again, moisturizers are really simple. I don't think that you need to spend over $50 on a moisturizer. In fact, you can get a like $10, $15 moisturizer from the drugstore and it might work perfectly for you. So don't overthink the product that you need to get things that are gonna be really expensive, even just using like CeraVe is fantastic. Another one, if you wanna go a little bit more upmarket, I really used to love a lot of Paula's Choice products. Something common that men do is we want the best of everything. So we want the best car, we'll want the best moisturizer, the best coffee machine. So we'll go to Google and we'll type that up and we'll see what we could find as the consensus best product. So there is no consensus best product. And so the good thing is that makes it really easy to purchase one. You don't need to overthink it, don't need to read tons of reviews. What I think is absolutely the best most pinnacle of moisturizers you might absolutely hate and vice versa. What makes one person's skin look absolutely incredible might make another person look like an oily, like acne covered mess. Tip number two is wash your filthy, disgusting face. Yes, I'm not talking about with a bar of soap, I'm not talking about with a three in one, I mean with an actual product that's meant for your face. The difference is something that is meant for your face typically is gonna have a different pH level and is gonna have a more sensitive type of ingredient. When, if I was to make a, a body product for someone, I'm gonna put a lot more cleansing power into that product than what I'm gonna put in the face. And so if you use that on the face, you are gonna be more prone to getting things like a compromised skin barrier or dry skin. What this does for anti-aging is on the antioxidant side of the house because any of the dirt, the grime, the pollution that you're getting on your skin is getting washed off so you don't have it kind of sitting around causing damage or anything. Additionally, if you're cleaning your skin, you're gonna be less likely to have acne, clogged pores and issues there. And so that's gonna result in less issues like scars or other things caused by inflammation. So how do you wash? Do you wash once a day, twice a day? When should I do it? So typically you should wash before you go to bed is a really good time to do it. If you wanna do it after you work out, you can do that as well. You wanna avoid overwashing your skin. So you likely don't wanna wash your face more than twice a day. Uh, twice a day is usually gonna be for someone who is, is maybe very oil prone, very acne prone. If you have dry skin and you wash your face twice a day, it's gonna be a mess. So for some people, they can wash their face at night and just splash their face with water in the morning. That's what I do. And others will wash twice. Again, I have links in the description below, but if your skin tends to be on the drier side, you'll ideally wanna look for something that's a bit more of a gentle, creamy type of cleanser. Whereas if you were on the oily side, you'll want something that's a little bit more potent. 
And if you're acne prone, I've got a really good video for you right here on exactly how you can tackle your acne. So definitely be sure to check that out. Again, the descriptions are in the link below here for products. Something that a lot of guys don't understand is that when you're washing your skin, it doesn't need to be like that squeaky clean of when you can touch it and kind of hear a noise. That usually means that you've cleansed a little bit too much of the skin. Ideally, a really good formulation is going to do a good job of cleaning the skin, cleaning out a lot of the dirt, the grime, and the oils while restoring a little bit of it afterwards so that your skin doesn't get overly dry or irritated. Guys, help your fellow man out. These men who have these same questions in you have no way of seeing this content if you don't give this a like, a comment, and subscribe. So if you like what you're seeing, absolutely do that. I've got a bonus tip for you right towards the end of the video, so be sure to stay tuned for that. But for now, let's get into tip number three. Tip number three is massive. If sunscreen is in that S plus tier, this is in the S tier. It is the gold standard when it comes to anti-aging and skincare as far as ingredients go. It can help with not just anti-aging, but it can help with acne. It can help with keeping fresher skin on the top so that you have that nice bright appearance. It helps with getting rid of hyperpigmentation. Just so many good benefits with this ingredient. And it is using a product with a retinoid in it. Retinoids are really a superstar when it comes to skincare. They could really do a good job of turning back the clock. Here's a few examples of some people who didn't use a retinol and then they went to using one and what their results ended up looking like. So for retinols, you can get them in your moisturizer. They tend to be a bit more expensive that way. Or you can also get it in what's called a serum. And so this is something that you'll wash your face, you'll apply this retinol, and then you'll apply your moisturizer and that's your nighttime routine. Nice and simple. It really shouldn't take you more than 60 seconds to do all of that. When you're first starting a retinol product, because it is such a strong ingredient, it's important to take a little bit of precaution. So don't immediately try to apply it every day, twice a day, anything like that. Stick with once a day and start with once a week, then maybe increase to every other day and see if you can start increasing to once a day. Because a common thing that'll happen when you're overdoing it is your skin will start to get dry. You'll see some peeling and some flaking. Potentially you can get what's called purging where you might start getting acne. If you're getting acne in areas that you typically get acne in, then that's most likely purging. If it's in new areas, then it might be irritation to the product. Purging typically lasts a couple of weeks to a month. For the benefits that you'll get from retinol, things like anti-acne, those will typically kick in anywhere from like a week to two weeks in. As for the awesome benefits to collagen, those do take a little bit more time to build up. So don't expect anything crazy on the fine lines or wrinkles until you're around like six to 12 months or so, but you will get some awesome benefits from it. Another option you have for a retinol is called tretinoin. It is a prescription that you can get from your doctor. You can also go to websites like apostrophe.com, do a telehealth visit, something like that, and get it prescribed. So basically retinol, you have retinol with a YL, converts into retinol with an OL, converts to retinol with an AL, which converts into retinoic acid, also known as tretinoin. So this is what's the most usable thing and what is doing all of the magic in your skin and you're just basically applying it directly without any conversion. And so as a result, you're gonna get really good benefits at a pretty good pace. However, you are a little bit more prone to irritation. So that's something to be on the lookout for. And in general with retinol, if you're getting irritation, you can cut down on the amount that you're using it. You could try putting on your moisturizer before putting on the serum, the, the retinol, and that can help cut down on irritation as well. Don't overthink the order of what you're doing things. It's really just wash, serum moisturizer, wash, moisturize serum. It's not a big deal which way that you wanna do it. So I've covered a lot of the myths along the way I'm realizing now, so I don't have too many of myths and common questions to answer here, but I'll start with men's products versus women's products. So there is a difference between men's skin and women's skin. So our skin tends to be thicker. It tends to have more collagen. We tend to produce more oil called sebum with our skin and thus we are a little bit more acne prone than what women are. And then of course, outside of the physiological differences of our skin, there's the environmental ones. So men are more likely to take jobs that are outdoors. We're more likely to do like sports, punch each other in the face. Uh, we shave our face every day. So there are some differences to men's skin. That doesn't mean that you can't use a, a woman's product. You could use a woman's product that will work perfectly for your skin. Uh, it is different for each guy. Generally speaking, we'll usually want something that is a little bit less oily than what your average woman might use. And it could be good to have an emphasis on soothing type of ingredients for whenever we're out wrestling bears or whatever we men do. Then the next myth I'm gonna lump kind of into a category and that's that you need a bunch of other products. So it's really difficult for men to go shopping for products when they don't know anything because you see so-and-so serum, eye cream, face mask, clay mask, there's all these things and it becomes very easy for someone to get confused and a little bit overwhelmed by it. 
So what I've just covered for you is really the main things that are gonna move the needle for you. There's some other things I'll cover in a more advanced video in maybe a few weeks, but those are gonna be the main ones. Anything else is just extra. So for example, for like eye creams, they can be nice because if you're using active ingredients, sometimes they'll have a little bit less of the active ingredient just to minimize the potential of irritation around the eye, but it's not anything that you need to use. It's not gonna be more efficacious for the eye area than using something that's meant for the entire face. It might be a little bit more gentle and feel a little bit better and a little bit more like nice glide when you're using it in the eye area, for example. Face masks um, is just really like an extra thing that you could do maybe to like pamper or take care of yourself. Another myth that some men will fall prey to is this movement around natural or clean products. Just because something is natural or quote unquote clean doesn't mean that it's better and you'd be very surprised. There's all this crap around like SLS, parabens and silicones. Again, natural and clean doesn't mean better. And Many times it means that there's more of a carbon footprint. It means that there's more potential for irritation and it means that you're using something that is less efficacious. Because a lot of these ingredients have had decades and decades of toxicologists, of chemists, really studying the ingredient and understanding how it works with our body and the long-term impacts of using it. And then you substitute that out for something that is quote unquote natural and you have a banana. Banana is made up of several, several, several chemicals and depending on the time of year that it's being grown, when it's being harvested, the area that it's being harvested, you get a different outcome. And so you're getting something that is a lot less predictable than making something synthetic. The bonus tip for you is to exfoliate. You can do this right after you cleanse or before you cleanse, whenever you wanna do it. I wouldn't do it on the same day that you shave, but this is what you're gonna do. So it's not just the physical exfoliants. You could use a, what's called a chemical exfoliant. So you might see these, and there's one called AHA, and there's one called BHA. So BHAs dive deeply into the pores and they clear out a lot of the oil. They can be very good for acne and blackheads and pimples. Whereas AHAs are gonna do more of the surface of skin. They're not really deep, digging in as deeply to clear out some of the oils, but it's clearing off that surface. So what's gonna happen when you use these, in addition to having more clear skin potentially, is you're gonna have a nice fresh layer of skin on the top. And when you have a nice fresh layer of skin on the top, everything looks a little bit better. So it's not, necessarily going to impact your anti-aging though these do have some anti-aging benefits to them but they will just generally make your appearance look a lot better on a day-to-day -day basis and the way that you'll implement these into your routine again you'll do like a wash exfoliate and then your serum and your moisturizer or just your moisturizer whatever you want to do and depending on the strength of what you're using you might just use it once a week or every three to four days there isn't an exact science to it but if you're getting irritation you just chill out from using it that wraps us up guys i know that you're going to be a handsome devil now that you know exactly what you need to do to take care of your skin i'll have more videos later on with more advanced topics around this but any questions you have with your particular routine how to layer certain things what products are good what are not good Ask them in the comments. I'm more than happy to spend time with you and help you put together a routine that's gonna help you feel and look your absolute best. Like, comment, subscribe, very much appreciated. Angel with the Modern Man here. I'll catch you next time.